Okay, so we'll start by taking a look at a simple example of classification. In SharePoint 2010 and SharePoint 2013, Microsoft gave us the Term Store and the Enterprise Keywords column, and these two things made it possible for users to tag documents. So let's take a look at how Semaphore can automatically populate this column. I'll we'll just drag in a document here, and it'll get classified. By the way, these demos use document libraries for simplicity. Semaphore can be used for any type of SharePoint content, documents, lists, wikis, publishing pages, whatever you need to do. Okay, so we're done and let's come back with composters and composting. These are terms from our model um, classification servers determined that these are relevant for this document. So that's a simple example. In the real world, our information architecture is probably a bit more complicated than adding the enterprise keywords column everywhere. Let's take a look at how we can do the same thing with multiple different columns of different types. This time, let's use the upload document button. And we'll just add the document here. Okay, so that's uploading. Um, so Semaphore processes content no matter how it's added or updated in SharePoint. You can drag and drop as we saw, or you can use the upload document button or Windows Explorer, or you can even use SkyDrive Pro. The metadata is still going to be applied automatically on add and again on update. In this case, this document library has three columns. I think it's got two MMS columns and a, a multi-line text column. And, and what's going to happen here is the document's going to be processed and these column values are going to be set automatically based on the, the content in the document and the terms in our model. So there we go, we see these two MMS columns are populated and this text field. Now our user can modify these terms if they want to. Let's say they feel this term isn't relevant, they can simply delete it and save the item. And what's going to happen is when the item's classified again in the future, let's say the document itself changes, uh, we're going to record the fact that the user manually modified this classification value and that will prevent it from being classified again. So we've seen how classification works by using your model to determine what metadata is appropriate, but what if we want to extract metadata that isn't in the model, stuff that changes, you know, things like places, dates, organisations, people. Um, Semaphore can help with that as well, and let's take a look at how it works. In this case I've got a document library set up with three manage metadata columns uh, and these columns are bound to open term sets in the term store, so that allows us to add user defined terms. What we're going to do in this case is we're going to switch to Explorer view and we're just going to handcraft a document. Choose a basic text document. I'll just use the default name and let's edit that and we'll add some content and what I'll do is I'll just take some content from the BBC's news website let's take a chunk of this and we'll just paste that in there and then we'll save this back to SharePoint Okay, so that looks as though it's done. Let's jump back in here and just refresh the page. Oh, 
So we can see here that a document's in there and a locations and organizations column have been populated automatically based on terms in the model. We don't have anything in people, so let's see what we can do to change that. Um, let's say we update the document to include the breaking news that Albert Einstein made a surprise visit. And we'll even spell his name properly just for fun. So we save that back to SharePoint. Again, it takes a few seconds to process. And we're done, so let's go back in here and refresh the page. And we see that the document's been reprocessed again, and this time Albert Einstein appears in a list of people who says that time travel is impossible. So that's it for out of the box columns, how we can populate those using uh, semaphore. Let's take a look at the semaphore column, as well as being able to populate standard MMS columns uh, and other column types. We've also added our own custom column that's based on the MS MMS column, but has a much richer user interface. So let me show you some of the differences here. It works in the same way as other columns and as contents added and uploaded uh, and updated is reclassified and the classifications are, are saved in the column. But there are a few differences. So the first thing you notice here is the blue boxes. Now these blue boxes give us a visual indicator of the relevance of, of a particular term. So in this case, changing school is more relevant than children's centres for this document. The next thing you notice is that when we click on these terms, we get a call out and that gives us a whole load of term information. Now because Semaphore allows you to create models and add metadata to terms in these models, we can use that additional metadata here to provide additional term information. So in this case we're showing additional relationships for changing school. Now this whole thing's templatable so you can bring in anything from your model text, HTML, images. You can even add custom buttons and stuff on here if you need to do that. Um, so that's a few of the obvious changes there. If we click on the browse button, I've made a few additions here as well. So you'll notice there's a few tabs along the top. The first tab here, Browse, is pretty much the same as the standard MMS column. It gives you a tree view and you can walk through your model and, and pick the things that you need to add to your column. The next tag here, uh, tab here is Visualize, and this is where you can see the difference between a semaphore model and the, the basic models you get with the term store. A semaphore model is an ontology, which means it's got multiple different relationship types, whereas the term store only allows us hierarchical relationships, you know, parent-child and that kind of thing. Um, because semaphore supports an ontology, a hierarchy isn't the best way to navigate around it because you've got multiple relationship types. What this visualization control does is it lets you jump around the model following pretty much any relationship type you want. So you see here I've got a has service relationship type. I can just click on that and it shows me all the terms. And I've got a few different relationships there. And the other thing you'll notice is that as I'm selecting these terms, I'm getting term information at the side here. And all of this makes it easier for a user to find exactly the term that they need to add to their column. The next tab here is classify. And what this does is it uses classification to provide suggestions. And you'd use this in a case where you didn't want to automatically classify the document. You wanted the user to select terms. This gives them a list of suggestions uh, with scores and they can pick the ones they need to add manually. Now, the last tab here is search and this isn't your standard search although it does match uh, parts of terms and stuff like that it also does concept mapping so if I type for example dumped cars this is going to return abandoned vehicles and the reason for that is that dumped cars is a synonym of abandoned vehicles so this is useful because it allows users to find terms even if they don't know the actual term name. You know, they can type in similar concepts and it's going to make some suggestions. 
So these are the changes we've made to the UI. As well as that, the semaphore column is much more configurable than the standard MMS column. With the standard MMS column, you can only use a single term set, whereas with semaphore, a model can, can uh, use multiple term sets. And also, we can apply filters both to the terms that you can select and to the terms that you can see in the model. And these filters can use any of the additional metadata that you've added to your semaphore model. So it goes way beyond what's possible using the, the term store. So hopefully you can see that by combining these techniques we can really make our information architecture work for us. And better still, we can do it without irritating our users, Alice and Bob. So that's it for classification. Let's take a look at what Semaphore adds to Search and SharePoint. The first thing to mention is that Semaphore isn't limited to SharePoint content. In fact, in SharePoint 2013 and Fast for SharePoint 2010, we can apply metadata to anything that can be crawled. So, for example, here's some search results from the BBC news site that have been automatically tagged. And we can see the tags here in the refiner on the left hand side. Can refine in some of this stuff. Um, and the other thing to, to bear in mind is that as organisations make the jump from SharePoint 2010 to SharePoint 2013, backwards compatibility is important. And of course, we can see that SharePoint 2010 content can be crawled by SharePoint 2013. But what may not be so obvious is that the classifications work across both systems. So, for example, if I search for care, one of the terms from a model, I'm getting back results from SharePoint 2013 and SharePoint 2010. But also the refinement panel in the left hand side here works properly as well. So if I go to child care, for example, um, and preschool learning. I'm getting back a result on 2013 and a result on SharePoint 2010. Now we're out of the box SharePoint that doesn't work because there are two different term stores but with Semaphore it's possible because Semaphore becomes the master for the term store. What it does is it pushes identical copies down to as many SharePoint 2010 and SharePoint 2013 farms as you need. Now in fact we can use the data for much more than just SharePoint but that's a story for another day. So, as well as being able to classify crawled content, Semaphore also provides some web parts that let you make better use of your model to drive search. And in this page we can see a few. At the top here we've got the Semaphore search box. And as we type terms, we get suggestions from our model. And if we mouse over one of the results we've got here, you can see in the callout we've also got a list of the classifications. Now these are the terms that have been applied to this document. And if we click in these terms, we can execute other searches. So I can click in maternity services, and that's going to bring back all of the documents that are tagged with maternity services. The other uh, web part we've got is a concept map mapping web part. So if I type in, if I do a free text search for business, it's going to come back and say, did you mean one of the following topics? And this has given me some tag suggestions. So I can click in these tags to execute another search. And also when I mouse over these, you see the same term information panel that we saw earlier when looking at the semaphore column. This is bringing in information from your ontology and displaying it there. So you can add a whole load of stuff in there. Um, that gives a user some idea of what they might get back if they perform this search. Here you can see the related terms web part. So what this is telling us is that in our model, organisations is related to councils. And again, we can click in this to perform another search. Um, 
the breadcrumb web part is another server for addition here because we're in our model because we've searched for the term organizations and we know where that is we can show the path back to the root and if we want to get back more results we can step back up the tree to people or organizations for example so these are just a few of the web parts that we have available and we're using the standard SharePoint search center template here now we spoke about context sensitive search earlier where search experiences are tailored to suit particular audiences let's take a look at how we can use a few more semaphore web parts to build these search experiences um, one of the examples I have here hierarchy what this does is it displays a hierarchy on the left hand side of all the terms in your model and you can walk through this hierarchy and see appropriate results so it's kind of like a folder structure you know so you see I'm getting search results on the right hand side and this provides an easy way for users to browse through the content on a SharePoint file and you see also the breadcrumb web part at the top here that's been populated as we move through these things um, let me show you another sample site the next one I've got here is Glossary now what this does is it displays an A to Z list of all the terms in your model and again as you click in these terms you're going to see the relevant content automatically populated down the bottom So you see we can easily bounce through these things and the whole thing is pretty dynamic. You know, as we click terms we see results instantly. We don't need to wait and the page being redrawn or a separate search query being executed. Now the last one I wanted to show you is our visualization. Now we spoke earlier about um how a hierarchy isn't necessarily the best way to display an ontology because of the different relationship types. Here we're using a visualization web part to allow users to browse the model using any of these relationship types. So here we go, we saw this before on the semaphore column. But here we've changed it a bit, we've added additional term information on the right hand side here. And we can also click in these terms to perform another search. So I can go to classification scheme you see, and it's going to update this control as well. And as before, we've got the search results being automatically populated down the bottom. So there we go. So that's it for my web parts. We've seen all the web parts that we provide as part of Semaphore for SharePoint. And hopefully I've shown you how easy it is to build the kind of rich interactive user experiences that will make it easier for Alice and Bob to find what they're looking for. Um, that's it for my demo. Let me jump back to the slides and we'll sum up.